We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Patricia died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal life. In baptism, Patricia was clothed in Christ, symbolized by the white garment. May she now stand in the ranks of the saints in glory. baptism, Patricia received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Together now, let us bring our dear sister to our Heavenly Father. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage, the Lord is my shepherd. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. Only goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd.
A reading from the letter of Paul, St. Paul, to the Ephesians. That is why I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. And I pray that God will bestow on you gifts in keeping with the riches of his glory. May God strengthen you inwardly through the workings of the Spirit. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, and may charity be the root and foundation of your life. Thus, you will be able to grasp fully with all the Holy Ones the breadth and length and height and depth of Christ's love, and experience this love which surpasses all knowledge, so that you may attain to the fullness of God's own self. To the one whose power now at work in us can do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, world without end. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lima Sabachthani which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion, who stood facing him, saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. This is a, a trying moment for our faith. And on one level, uh, I've always known Pat to be a woman of uh, deep faith, uh, a woman who loves Jesus so much, her generosity in sharing her life for the sake of others and building up family life and uh, her service in the life of the community, the hours that she spent at church in her generosity towards making other people's lives better. I don't know how many funeral masses that she served for me here at the church, uh, just like JC was the one carrying the cross. Pat loved to be the one carrying the cross and being there for just funeral after funeral when I first got here. Um, so probably uh, 30, 40 funerals that we spent together. And that love which we experienced from her, that's not magic, you know, that's, that's born of a heaven relationship. 
we learn love from God. We learn love from the Father through the Son by the Holy Spirit. I think the uh, heartache that a lot of us feel of the loss of her presence is, you know, that constant presence of love in our lives, the, the forgiveness, the being there for us, supporting us, and now suddenly that's taken away from us. There's a source of divine love in my life that just seems to disappear. What do I do with that? When someone that I care about so much suddenly is gone. Well, this, this is what the Lord says will happen. The Lord does not give us promises that heaven is on earth. It's not. We can try all we want to have divine life here on, on earth. But ultimately, our real life, our eternal life, is to be in heaven with Jesus and the saints, all that have gone before us. And that life in heaven is a life of love, where every person in heaven loves one another with this graciousness, this infinite graciousness for the other, service for the other. All of those things that we know love is to be, love is patient, love is kind, it is not rude, it does not uh, bear grudges, it endures all things, believes all things. This relationship of love we learned from Jesus when he walked around on earth. Jesus knows the darkness that we live in. God knows the, the trouble of the world that we face so regularly in our personal lives and on the grand scale of things that go on in our nation, things that go on in our world, pandemic. I don't know about you, but this is a time of loneliness. It's a time of feeling separated from one another. These don't help. It's hard to read each other's body language and expressions. It's hard to know, am I okay? Because we, we, we rely on those faces, don't we? we? We rely on that personal contact, knowing that things are going to be okay because of someone's face as they show it to us. And when we lose that, uh, it's painful. But again, our God does not leave us alone. The mystery that we just celebrated a few weeks ago of Christmas is the fact that our God is seeing us in the brokenness of our world that is the result of sin. He does not leave us alone. He breaks through the darkness, the loneliness, the, the violence, the stuff that has separated us in relationship from God and one another in nature. God steps into that and takes it on himself, Jesus. Uh, one of the reasons I selected today's gospel as kind of uh, intense as it is, uh, Jesus is being crucified in this moment. He's taken on the sins of this world. He's taken on death itself. He's tasting it all the way into the darkest depths of death. He's going there with us. I don't know about you, but I, death is scary, at least on some level. We all probably would like to just die in our sleep and wake up in front of Jesus. That'd be nice. And to have a traumatic moment where we're not able to breathe right, where we're not able to uh, understand what's going on, we're not able to communicate. You know, for Pat, in those moments that we were with her at the church when she was uh, having her medical event there, uh, it was, I could see the fear in her eyes. It's scary when you can't communicate and when things are getting overwhelming. Uh, I was so impressed by the number of people who were just right there to be next to her and console her. Uh, 
and to have first responders just right there, so close. And, um, you know, she's in church of all the places to go, to, you know, to, to have your life be uh, set up where you're, you're facing God in this moment by being in the church. It's a beautiful thing, as hard as it is. And for us to be there with her, and then um, we know time passed, and now we're at where we are at. But the Lord has given us this time and kind of a preparation for this moment to experience death the way it is. I, I just imagine how hard it was for the apostles, for Mary and John and Mary Magdalene standing by the cross watching Jesus struggle, not knowing what they could do to help. But, but being there. And we know that that's not the end of the story, is it? The incredible miracle that God pulls off, that death itself is not the end of the story. Three days later, Jesus rises from the dead and shows us the wounds in his hands as he stands in front of the 12 apostles in the upper room. The disciples that were gathered there, he shows them that and he says, peace be with you, shalom, peace between us. All things are being made right in Jesus. He conquers over death, he conquers over sin, he conquers over darkness. He brings the light into the darkness of our world. And then he ascends to heaven sometime later. And that's where he's been waiting for us. And so we all now await to see him face to face. There's a kind of blessing in entering into our final stage and preparing for death where we now know that we are going to see Jesus face to face and in the moment of doing so he is the good shepherd the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he's so good you know, he meets us in that moment and he knows that our souls need to be ready to enter into that divine love for all of eternity. So there's some things that he has to, to do with us to get us ready. He has to meet with us and show our life to us, stage by stage, moment by moment. He wants his love to permeate every moment of our history. And so if there's anything that's unreconciled, anything that's needing forgiveness, anything that's needing healing, that's what he wants to do. And we have to face that. It's not easy. Uh, but by his grace, we are able to do so. And we pray for people who have died for two reasons. You know, this... Mass that we're celebrating, you hear language of us praying for her as she stands in judgment. That's what this is, having our life put, put place before us. And in that moment of judgment, that we would let Jesus heal those things. I don't know about you, but when somebody shows me things that I've done in the past, I don't, I don't really want to face it. <laughs> I, I avoid it. And there's time on earth to avoid those things, but in death we can't do that any, anymore. <clears throat> so we must, in faith, trust Jesus to heal that. And that comes to the second part. So the first part is the openness of our heart to receive his presence and allow him to do that, to go through and look at everything with us and us to say we're sorry for anything that we've done, to forgive those who have done things against us. And then um, his love needs to purify it, to make whole that which is incomplete, so that we can enter into full life and just look at each other 
and see one another and not be afraid to see each other. Oh, what are they going to think? No, no, you don't need to do that anymore. Because we've been cleansed all the way in love. We can look at God and just rejoice in our relationship with God. No more walls anymore. And we can look at one another and be comfortable with our friends, with our family, and even our enemies to be at peace with one another. Peace be with you. And then uh, to be at peace with nature itself and even our bodies being given back to us in the resurrection so that we would be able to share in divine life, body and soul together for all of eternity. So he has to, he has to go through all of that. We pray for those two things. Lord, open Pat's heart in any way that she needs. And may your love purify her so that she can enjoy divine life with you. So Pat, uh, if there are ever any times that we have caused pain in your life or have hurt you in any way, please forgive us. If there's any way in which you've ever hurt our feelings or caused difficulty for us, we forgive you. We are sorry. And I ask that you be at peace now with Jesus. And you can imagine then, uh, I think one of my favorite things is imagining what's it like entering into heaven? Gosh, I just get so excited, you know? So Patricia is entering the building, Pat, you know, she, there she is. So when she comes in, just anybody that she's ever had contact with in her life that's gone before in faith that's waiting there. Hi, Pat, it's so great to see you. We used to be together as kids, and it was so wonderful when we were able to spend time together. You were so generous. You always kind of let me play first or let things happen this way, and I'm just so grateful for that. I had to come out and meet with you and be with you. Hi. We used to be together at dinners at the parish, help, and you were there helping out. You'd serve food, or you brought me drinks over the table, and I'm just so grateful. You were so kind and so wonderful. Thank you. Hi, Pat. You... you were always so kind in the words that you said to me. And there was that one time I was having a horrible day and you reassured me in my faith. You reminded me that Jesus loves me and that things are going to be okay. That the angels are dancing in heaven, right? Yeah. Hi, Pat. I'm your great, 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 great grandmother. Never even knew I'd have a great, 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 great granddaughter. Here you are. It's so wonderful. So, uh, brothers and sisters, even in the shock of what we're facing of death, and seeing our loved one whose face is now gone from us, uh, let's turn to Jesus. His face is always available to us. He is the God of mercy and healing and forgiveness. He is the one to welcome on us into paradise to be with him. And we can look to him and see his face and see the love emanating from him. He's gone all the way to the darkest of places, even to death itself. And he has turned it around. He has conquered over it. He is our Savior, our Lord, and he loves us. And he looks forward to meeting each one of us face to face in heaven. For Patricia, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. For our sister, who received the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may share in God's banquet in heaven, we pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of our sister Pat, 
that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick, that they may receive the care they need and be supported with Christ in carrying the cross, we pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, especially our deceased relatives and friends, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your name, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of us from the As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Patricia, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as, uh, as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel as you are here. 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Donald our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Patricia, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us this. Please kneel as you are healed. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. For the uh, time of Holy Communion, for those that are um, Catholic and coming forward today, we'll have ministers here in the front, and um, you are allowed to pull down your mask as you approach to be able to say amen and receive the Eucharist before you head back to your pew, okay? So you're allowed to do that as you approach. And um, one of us uh, also at, at some point will be making our way up to the musicians, Upstairs, and if you are not able to come forward and you want to just flag us down, we'll bring communion right to you where your pew is at. Um, I also do have special low gluten hosts for those that have gluten tolerance issues. It'll be in my line uh, on the right side as you come forward. So just ask for the special host as you approach, and I'll be able to provide that for you. For those that are not Catholic, those Catholics that are not receiving communion today, um, if it's easier just to remain in your pew, you're most welcome to do that. If it's easier to go through the line a bit in order to let people uh, out and, and follow through the line, you're welcome to do that. You may stop, stop in front of one of us ministers uh, and make a cross with your arms and touch your shoulders like this, and, and we'll offer a prayer with you in that moment as you approach that Jesus would give you his grace. Jesus gives grace to whomever he wants. We know that our churches are not yet united in the Eucharist, but we want to pray for that day to happen soon while we be respectful and waiting for that time to arrive.
stand. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it our sister Pat may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We'll be having our procession now out to the vehicles in just a moment after we've um, had a commendation of uh, Pat to the Father. There's a moment of incense, and we'll be moving our, ourselves outside for the procession to the cemetery. You are welcome to join us out there for the burial uh, right after Mass is done. Um, and you are able to use any of the exits for departing, okay, as we uh, leave today. That's not a problem. Well, uh, thank you to all of those who helped to make today very beautiful. Thanks to our musicians. Thanks to... Joe Schuler and the Schuler Funeral Home. Thanks to all who got everything organized with pictures and, de and the, the beautiful flowers and the liturgy and all of that. So thank you for your, your help and your presence and for all of you being here today. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again in the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Thank you. 